In this video, we're going to take a look at a MIDI input and output circuit. We'll analyze how it works and how it connects to an Arduino. The name MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface and has been the standard protocol for communication between electronic instruments since its introduction in 1983. It recently celebrated its 30th anniversary, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. MIDI devices are connected with a 5-pin cable and can transmit information like note pitch, velocity, pitch bend, and control messages. Now let's look at a byte of MIDI data. A MIDI signal is a digital wave that varies between 5 volts and 0 volts. We'll refer to the 5 volt signal as high and the 0 volt signal as low. In digital electronics, the high signal is read as a 1, while the low signal represents a 0. When the MIDI system is not sending a message, it keeps a line in the 5 volt state. When the instrument is ready to send a message, it will drop the line to zero volts. This is called a start bit, and it tells the receiving instrument to get ready for a message. The instrument will then transmit eight bits of data down the line. Finally, it will return the line to the five volt state to end the message. This is called a stop bit. This particular message is telling the connected instrument to play a note. The first four bits of the message, 1001, is a MIDI code that means note on. The second four bits tell the receiving instrument which channel this command is meant for. If the receiving instrument is not set to this channel, it will simply ignore the message. Now let's take a look at the actual components of the MIDI circuit. The majority of this circuit is made of very simple components like resistors and diodes. So even a beginner should be able to recognize the majority of these parts. The one part you may not be familiar with is this 6N138 optocoupler chip. So let's start by taking a look at this in more detail. The 6N138 optocoupler is an 8-pin microchip that helps protect and electrically isolate your MIDI device from whatever you plug into it. This device consists of an LED light source and a phototransistor that you can picture as a light detector and a switch. The light source is on the input side of the circuit and is turned on and off by the incoming MIDI data. The phototransistor is on the output side of the circuit and will turn its switch on when it detects light. The key point of this is that the input and output of the chip are not electrically connected. Information is only passed by light. This ensures that even if there's a large voltage spike on your MIDI input jack, it won't get transferred to the rest of the instrument. Here's a diagram of what's actually going on in the chip. On the left side is the input LED, and the phototransistor is on the right. Now let's go back and look at the schematic. We'll start by taking a look at a MIDI output circuit. This is a very simple circuit consisting of just a MIDI jack and a 220 ohm resistor. The schematic shows pin 4 of the MIDI jack connected to a constant 5 volt source through the resistor. Pin 5 of the jack is connected to the Arduino's transmitter pin. Finally, pin 2 of the jack is connected to ground. This will connect to the shield of the MIDI cable when it's plugged in. The thing to keep in mind is that the TX pin can be either 5 volts or 0 volts depending on what's happening with the MIDI signal. In order to properly analyze this circuit, we're going to need to look at the whole picture. So let's connect our MIDI out circuit to the MIDI in circuit of another instrument. The dotted lines represent the connection made by the MIDI cable. First, let's focus on the MIDI input circuit. For now, we'll stop at the input of the optocoupler. We'll look at the output a little later. This part of the circuit contains a MIDI input jack, a 220 ohm resistor, a small signal diode, and the LED contained in the optocoupler. One important point to notice is that the MIDI input jack does not have its pin 2 tied to ground. 
This is done on purpose to prevent ground loops being created between the two instruments. Round loops can add noise and interference to the MIDI signal, so we want to avoid them at all costs. To understand the circuit, we first have to understand how diodes work, so let's take a look at that now. You can think of a diode as a gate that allows current to pass in one direction but not the other. Diodes are polarized devices having a positive side called the anode and a negative side called the cathode. When the diode's anode side becomes more positive than the cathode side, it will allow current to pass through in this direction. However, if the cathode side becomes more positive than the anode, the current will be blocked. Every diode has an important rating called the forward voltage or VF. The anode has to be more positive by this amount before the diode will start working. In our MIDI-in circuit, the small signal diode has a forward voltage of 0.7 volts. The light emitting diode in the optocoupler has a forward voltage of 1.3 volts. Now that we've seen all the components, we can start analyzing the circuit. The first thing to notice is that this entire circuit is connected to the transmitting instrument. No part of it is electrically connected to the receiving instrument. Now think back to when we talked about the TX pin and how it can be at 5 volts or 0 volts depending on what's happening with the MIDI signal. First, let's look at what happens when the TX pin is high. When the MIDI signal sends the TX pin high, 5 volts will appear at that pin. The 5 volts will travel down the line to the anode of the small signal diode. It will also appear on the cathode of the LED. The top 5 volt supply will also send its voltage down the line. Notice how there is no voltage difference across either of the diodes. That means both diodes will be off and no current will flow through the circuit. Now we'll see what happens when the MIDI signal goes low. The top 5 volt supply will remain at 5 volts, but the TX pin is now low and will drop to 0 volts. This can also be referred to as ground. You can see that the diodes now have a voltage difference across them. The small signal diode has more voltage on its cathode than it does on its anode. And if you remember from our diode discussion, this means it will not pass current. The LED on the other hand has 5 volts more voltage on its anode than it does on its cathode. Since it only requires a 1.3 volt difference, this is more than enough to turn it on. As soon as the LED turns on, current will start flowing through it. It will travel from the 5 volt supply, through the resistors, through the LED and end up on the ground pin. Now we need to calculate how much current is passing through the circuit. First, here's a rule you need to know. When a diode turns on, it will drop or subtract its forward voltage from the total voltage of the circuit. Earlier, we discovered that the LED has a forward voltage of 1.3 volts. So, we'll simply subtract this 1.3 volts from the 5 volts that's powering the circuit. This leaves 3.7 volts to be dropped across the rest of the circuit. Now, we can use Ohm's law to figure out the current in the circuit. Ohm's law states that current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. We already know the total voltage of the circuit, which is 3.7 volts. To find the total resistance, we just add up all the resistors in the circuit, which in this case comes to 440 ohms. So we divide 3.7 volts by 440 ohms, and that gives us 0.0084 amps, or 8.4 milliamps. If we check the optocoupler's data sheet, we can see that the maximum suggested current for the LED is 20 milliamps, and at 8.4 milliamps, we're well within spec. At this point, you may be wondering about the small signal diode, because it really hasn't done anything in the circuit yet. This diode is here for protection, and will only come into play if something goes wrong in the circuit. Let's pretend you plug in a bad MIDI cable that has its wires reversed. If we didn't have our small signal diode, when the TX pin went low, 
5 volts would appear on the cathode of the LED while the anode was at ground. As we know, this is the reverse of what the LED needs to turn on. If you check the data sheet, you'll notice that the maximum reverse voltage that the diode can take is 5 volt. In electronics design, it's always a bad idea to run a component at its maximum rating. Optocouplers are delicate devices, and running it in this condition could easily damage it. So let's add the small signal diode back into the circuit. The small signal diode now has the correct voltage to turn on. This diode has a forward voltage rating of 0.7 volts. And as we discovered before, when a diode turns on, it will drop this voltage amount from the circuit. Notice how the LED is in parallel with this diode. So now, instead of feeling 5 volts across it, which could be dangerous, it's only feeling 0.7 volts. This is well under its maximum rating, and the LED is now safe. Okay, let's put our circuit back to normal and continue with the analysis. We're now looking at the optocoupler's photo transistor, and as we mentioned before, it will turn on when the optocoupler's LED lights up. Once this transistor is on, it will allow current to flow through it. Basically what this does is connect the bottom of the 220 ohm resistor to ground. So now you can picture current flowing from the 5 volt source through the 220 ohm resistor through the transistor to ground. Now take a look at the receiver pin. This pin will connect to your Arduino's RX input. Notice how it's connected to the same point as the bottom of the 220 ohm resistor. As we just saw, this point will be at ground when the transistor is turned on. Your Arduino will see this as a digital low signal. Now let's take a look at what happens when the phototransistor is turned off. When this happens, no current will be able to flow through the transistor. No current means no voltage is dropped across the 220 ohm resistor. This will cause the 5 volts from the power supply to appear at the RX pin. The Arduino will see this as a digital high. So let's sum up the whole circuit. When the MIDI signal sets the TX pin low, current will flow from the 5 volt source through the LED making it light up. This will turn on the phototransistor allowing current to flow through it. Current will flow from the 5 volt source through the 220 ohm resistor. This will cause the RX pin to be at ground potential, which will be read as a low by the Arduino. So basically, a low signal on the TX pin equals a low signal on the RX pin. On the other hand, if the TX pin is high, no current will flow through the optocoupler's LED. This will cause the phototransistor to shut off and not allow current to flow through it. With no current flowing, the RX pin will be at 5 volts just like the power supply. This will be read as a high signal by the Arduino. So a high signal on the TX pin equals a high signal on the RX pin. At this point you should be getting a pretty good handle on this circuit. But you might be wondering about the one part we haven't talked about yet, which is this 4.7K resistor. If you go online and look up versions of the MIDI in circuit, especially ones using the 6N138 optocoupler, you'll find that some contain this component and some leave it out. So what exactly does it do? If you check out the data sheet, it says that this resistor helps discharge any stored capacitive charges that build up in the transistor. This has the effect of actually speeding up the turn on and turn off time of the transistor. Let's look at why that's important. Whenever a signal passes through a component, it will pick up a slight delay. This difference in timing between the input signal and the output signal is called the propagation delay. In a MIDI circuit, the optocoupler is the main culprit for this delay. And the MIDI specifications suggest that it's kept below 2 microseconds. 
So with propagation delay in mind, let's use an oscilloscope to look at the actual input and output waveforms. In these images, the input waveform is on the bottom in blue and the output waveform is on the top in yellow. The first thing you'll notice is that the leading edge of the output waveform is much sharper with the 4.7K resistor in place. Now as we zoom in, you can really see the propagation delay between the input and output waveforms. If we use the scope's measuring tools, we can see that the delay drops from 2.7 microseconds to 1.7 when the resistor is in place. So it really does seem that this resistor adds a lot of benefit to the circuit. Hopefully by now you have a good understanding of the parts of this circuit and their function. Have fun adding MIDI to your next project. Visit notesandvolts.com for more projects and tutorials and once again, thanks for watching.